In this video, I'm going to explain exactly, as a manager, how to create the best working environment for you and your people so you can all prosper, develop, perform well and enjoy your time in the working environment. Now, if you asked the people in your team or the business or other managers in your business what they want from their time at work, I can guess they will come up with something along the lines of the four key qualities I'm going to share with you. Now, this is not leadership or management rocket science. I think it's just good common sense. And I think that's always a good place to start when we're trying to create the right environment for our people. So these four qualities, attributes that people would like in the working environment. Number one, people want to feel valued and appreciated. Who doesn't? Yeah, who doesn't? Ask yourself these questions. People want to do something worthwhile and to have a purpose. There again, who doesn't? Who wants to do something that's boring or is irrelevant? We want to do something that's worthwhile and has a good purpose. The third one, believe it or not, people want to enjoy what they do. There again, do you want to spend your whole working career not enjoying what you do? So you retire and go, I'm glad I spent the last 30, 40 years not enjoying myself. So that's number three, people want to enjoy what they do. Number four, people want to learn, develop and grow. People don't want to stand still, they know they'll be out of a job, they know that they'll become irrelevant, they need to progress. We can't just stand still, everybody knows that. So these are four key qualities that people want from their working environments. What we've got to think about is how are you going to create them. So how are we going to keep things simple so we can give people the right working environment so these four qualities attributes can be achieved well here we go but before we do we firstly need to think about working on ourselves so it's time to get the mirror out and have a good look at yourself and ask yourself some of the following questions would you like to work for you mm, there's a question for you to think about Go and have a think about it. The second one is what are your skills? What are your attributes? What are your strengths? Build awareness. So it's important that you do have confidence and competence in what you do. So know what you're good at, but also you've got to ask on the flip side, what do you need to improve on? Get feedback from above, from your team, from other managers, and yeah, look at how you can improve. Build your self-awareness. Is it vital that you, you are you? You put your own personality to be a manager. Don't try and be like somebody else. Be you with responsibility and build trust and respect both ways. People aren't gonna trust and respect you if you don't trust and respect them. Keep things simple so people can't fail to understand what's required and what's to be achieved. Um, sometimes we're very good at overcomplicating things with processes. Just be human and have human conversations. But remember, you cannot do it all. You need to be able to empower and enable people. It's not all about you doing everything. So you've got to think, are you creating an environment so people can achieve? So they can carry on things that they need to be doing so you can get involved in more important things. Remember, as I've already just said, it's not about you. As I've already said, be confident and competent. Upskill you, yourself. Um, you've got to upskill yourself before you can expect other people to improve. So, yeah, we've got to look at ourselves and start with ourselves before we start thinking about how we're going to create this environment for others. So if you want people to change, develop and improve, how are you going to lead the way? What do you need to do first? Naturally, if you need any help on this, give me a shout. Be more than happy to have a conversation. So now we've looked at ourselves and to help you in doing this, we've got a great offer in the uh, link below. Um, it's, a, it's a download on how you can develop yourself and manage your own personal development. So we've talked about ourselves, but now we've got to go back to those, uh, those four key qualities that people want from their working environments. So the first one, and we're just going to talk about how we can help them, or how we can create the environment so they can achieve these. So the first one, people want to be valued and appreciated. And as I said earlier, who doesn't? So make sure you have regular one-to-ones. 
Um, ask for their ideas, get them involved, get them presenting to you. Don't make it one way that you do all the talking and they have to sit there and go, here we go again, yeah? Give feedback, give praise. Feedback helps people to understand why they are good. Praise helps people to understand that they've done something well. So they go hand in hand. So ask yourself, do you give enough feedback? And yeah, deal with the difficult issues, but help people to feel valued and appreciated. And don't forget to listen to them. Be present in the conversations. When they're talking, don't be thinking what you're gonna say next. Just listen, listen to understand. So number two, people want to do something worthwhile and of purpose. So delegate and empower well, get people to think for themselves. Learn to let go. Remember, you can't do everything. You need your people to support you. Involve your people in decision making for themselves, for the team, for the business, for the clients. Help them to make those decisions and yeah, involve them. And sometimes say, look, <laughs> these are all the information that I have. What would you do? Get them to learn to think like you have to think and how perhaps other directors and managers have to think. And make sure your people understand and see the end goal of what we're working towards. Make sure it's very clear and their contribution. It's lovely when you work with people and they say, yeah, I built that, I worked on this, I've helped to develop this. Now that may be in a food manufacturing company that they can walk around supermarkets with their family and say, yeah, we produce that, we make that. They need to see how they contribute. So they feel that they have value and have a good purpose. Number three was people want to enjoy what they do. I'm not saying you turn up to work and go, right, come on, let's enjoy ourselves. Because they think, oh, been on a management course. <laughs> You've been watching those YouTube videos again, yeah? Don't be so serious about yourself, but be you with responsibility. Put your own personality towards it. Create social interaction. Show you that you're interested in your people, not just because they achieve tasks for you, but show an interest in them as a person, their hobbies, the things they like doing, their family. You know, just, just be human with all of this. My favourite word, humanistic. We'll come back to that later, I'm sure. Let the team be themselves. Don't have too many rules and structures and things. As long as they're performing and they understand what's expected of them, let them get on with it, yeah? Encourage them to think for themselves and take self-responsibility. Now, if there are problems, deal with conflict quickly. Deal with poor performance quickly. People in teams don't like to have to carry others or see that other people are getting away f uh, with things. If they see that you are dealing with difficult situations early and well, you will just get nothing but respect. And that is a good thing to have if you're trying to create the right working environment. And celebrate success and achievements. Not, well, that's what we expect of you. Come on, let's be human again. Humanistic, yeah? Let's create a bit of a feel-good factor. And when we have done well, get people to understand what it was that they did well. So we can build a self-awareness and responsibility in our individuals and in our teams. Now the fourth thing is in today's environment, people want to learn, they want to develop, they want to grow, they want to be able to adapt and deal with change. So encourage them. Don't just sort of, you know, put them there and, you know, in the dark and only tell them what they need to know in your eyes, yeah? Let's, let's, let's find out what their aspirations are. It may be that you may be sitting there and thinking that means I'm only gonna have them for two years. So what? It's your job to get two good years out of them. Act as a mentor when needed. Give them some advice. Get them another mentor in the business. Show that you under, understand them and what they're trying to achieve and appreciate them as a person. Yeah, but understand their career aspirations and help them develop those skills. Challenge them to take on new responsibilities, presentations, team meetings, client meetings. Trust them, give them the chance to go and do these things. You'll benefit from it, this as well, because that's gonna free you up to get on with more important things as well. Always discuss what they've learned and what's gone well. I think these are great topics and great conversations to have so people can see that they're constantly developing. Invest in them, give them some time, point them in the right direction, give them the skills that they need. So these are the four areas that we've you know, got to work on to create the right working environment.
People want to be valued and appreciated. People want to do something worthwhile and have a purpose. People want to enjoy what they do and people want to learn and develop and grow. But don't forget your role in all of this. Look at yourself first. Go and have a look in the mirror and ask yourself those questions that we've discussed. You'll thank me for it in the long run and so will your people. Thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.